What's up guys, Specstar here today with another video for Draft League 101. And in this one, instead of talking about various topics vaguely, I'm going to dive right into one topic, and that topic is team building. Team building is a really important topic because the way you build your team is so crucial to how well you do in league battles. And of course, uh, with team building, the best way to improve is just to keep doing it. You're going to get better every time you team build. But there are definitely some things you should know if you're just getting started, and I'm going to try and cover that here today. And on to the next slide. Identifying threats. This is an interesting topic here. Identifying threats is the first step. It's going to be the first thing you do before any battles. You want to look at your opponent's team and find out what's a big threat to you. And you're going to look over your team and find out what's a big threat to them. What are threats? Well, threats are, are anything that is just a nuisance to deal with. Threats are not just offensive. There can be... Usually they're going to be offensive. It's going to be that Pokemon you have a hard time walling. But it's also going to be that wall you have a hard time breaking. I mean, if you're... If you get a team full of physical attackers, then uh, something like an Ala Momola can, can be a real threat to you. What is a problem to your team? Yep. Yeah, that's the main thing you're looking at. You want to find out what can be a potential issue for you. And how can you deal with it? That's the next step. Once you figure out what's a threat, you need to look over your team and try to find a way that you can deal with these things that are a threat to you. Let's try it. We're going to look at these teams and identify threats. And I've got two teams from a league I'm in. And yep, fun fact, I didn't ask their permission to use their teams for this. I just grabbed them from the dock. And we've got Killer's team and Stan's team. The Solar Beams and the Salamences. Now right away, you see that Greninja Protein. That's always going to be a problem. But it, Stan's going to have a hard time dealing with it. He's got Blaziken, which should be able to outspeed it, but there are quite a few things Greninja can do that can be an issue for him. For example, it could be uh, some sort of scarf set throwing off U-turns. It could be a, like an expert belt set with low kick for Blissey and Ice Beam. Water move. And that could be a nuisance for him. It's just overall very annoying Pokemon to deal with. And on the other end, of course, Blaziken. That thing's going to be a nightmare to deal with. Always is. Blaziken basically can... If there's not Dust Noir coming, it can throw off high jump kicks pretty well. It also has a pretty good... If it can deal with Vaporeon using maybe like a Power Herb, it can be a threat, especially attacking, throwing off some Fire Blast. Landorus T, that's always an issue. It's not a Z user in this matchup, but if it was, it would be a much bigger problem. With it not being that, then maybe it's not the end of the world for him. But if it's banded, taking U-turns from it is going to be really annoying for Killer. It can also be a little bit annoying for him if it's Scarf. And I'm just going to look over all the Pokemon, trying to identify the threats. Beedrill, that's going to be an issue for him. He m you'd have to get pretty creative to deal with it. He's got Registeel, which is going to be a big help, but uh, Beedrill does learn Drill Run, which is going to do a lot. And really, Registeel is all he's got for that B. He could try to run like a Dustmoor with Rocky Helmet, but still, it's not, not overly loving a knockoff. Gengar, that's a colossal issue for him. It can just throw off sludge waves and shadow balls really freely. 
particularly a Specs. Gengar just really throws off hits. That's something he's going to have to really think about in his prep. Could see, like, a specially defensive Vaporeon come to deal with that. Although, if it has Trick, that could be even more of an issue for him. It could also be a Z-Move user, because that is his Z-user. And we could see it be a never-ending Nightmare variant, or even an Acid Downpour set. Additionally, he might have a little bit of an issue breaking Florges, unless he brings a Slazzle for that. But it's not too big of an issue, not really. On the other hand, um, Zygarde with a Z move is such a nightmare for Stan to deal with. Especially if it's some sort of Dragonium variant that can just bot the Landorus. He does have Ditto for that, so if it Dragon Dances up, it'd have to do something first to Ditto to be able to win like that. But really, like a ban variant's very strong in this game. Ban can just throw off thousand arrows on anything. Straptor would be annoying if Skarmory didn't come, but uh, very well should, especially with the Ansi being there. Slazzle would normally be an issue, but he's got the Blissey there, so maybe not so much if he brings it. Other than that, it can throw off its stab pretty cleanly. The Ansi is a very real potential issue if it's a specially attacking variant, or some sort of mix set that has something like Hidden Power Fire to hit Skarmory. And Zera Aura is going to be a real issue, I think. It can really hit anything. Plasma Fist hits everything except for Landorus and Guzzlord, which get hit by close combat and hidden power ice. Zera Aura is probably the biggest threat here. And then. Him on Lee can, is also a bit of a nuisance to switch in because it does have the coverage for everything. It's got the knockoff, the high jump kick, and the poison jab, which can kind of hit everything. But it probably would have to be a choice. A lot of things come down to Landorus being able to wall them, so that thing should get chipped down pretty early. That'll, that's my prediction for how that's going to go. Because so many things it has to come in on, and it doesn't have any reliable recovery. So that's it. Um, those are some of the main threats I've identified. You guys can do the same here, and you can try it out in your matchups. Basically, it's going to get easier the more you do it, or the more you play, and you kind of see what things are doing in certain matchups. Let's move to the next slide, and we're going to talk about speed creeping here. This is an interesting topic. What is speed creeping? Speed creeping is a way that you handle your speed stat in league format. In the tiers, usually you're running things with no speed or 252 speed. In league, you're looking at your opponent's team, and you're trying to see what specifically you need to be faster than. So if you have a Latios and your opponent's fastest Pokemon is a Victini, you're probably just going to have 320, well, it can't have 329 because the way EVs work, you'd probably have 330 speed on it, just because you don't need really to be faster than that, you just need to be faster than the Pokemon your opponent has. And that's when we get into the topic of creeping creeps. So let's say uh, you have Tornadus Therian, and then after Tornadus Therian, your next fastest Pokemon is Victini, and your opponent has Latios. You could say that Latios is probably just going to have 330 speed, 
So all I need on my Tornet is, instead of having 351, all I really need is 331, and that lets me be modest, or adamant, or whatever. But of course, it's dangerous. Yeah, it is a little bit dangerous. I thought the next piece was about this, but there are risks that I should talk about because that guy could have more speed than that on his Latios, and a lot of people I know who are new in league and don't really have the most experience just put 252 speed on things, and you never know until you really see your opponent how experienced they are. And then, of course, there's over-creeping. Now, what over-creeping is, is we'll take the thing about Latios and McTini. Instead of having 330 speed to be just faster than McTini, maybe you have 335 speed on your Latios so that the guy with the Tornadus thinks that he can't just put 331 because you're not directly creeping. So what you do is you creep and then you put more speed than you really need. And that's just so that your opponent cannot creep your creeps. Your opponent has to creep something's maximum speed. And that's what over-creeping is. It's really an advanced technique. I don't really know too many people that do that. What's worth creeping? Now that's an interesting question. Let's say you have, well, I might as well just keep running with the same example. You've got a Tornadus, and your opponent has Victini, and they have Floatzel. And Floatzel's faster than Victini, but slower than Tornadus. And to make Tornadus faster than Floatzel, you have to put you have to make it a speed boosting nature instead of a, an attack or special attack boosting nature. So you, in this case, you might ask yourself the question, is it worth it to speed creep Floatzel? And really, there's no right answer. It's just based on the matchup. Do you think Floatzel's really something that could realistically be an issue to you? Do you need, to, do you need your Tornadus to be faster than Floatzel? Or do you have, I don't know, a f I was going to say Ferrothorn, but then you have to worry about Hidden Power Fire. Do you have a Vaporeon that can always deal with that Floatzel? If you do, then you're probably not going to want to make Tornadus faster than Floatzel. You're probably just going to make it faster than the Victini. And then there's Scarf and Agility creeping, which is where you want to be faster than something with a scarf. So it, let's say you have a, let's say you have Mega Beedrill and you're facing a team with Hoopa Unbound. You're probably going to want to make your Beedrill faster than the most amount of speed a Hoopa Unbound can have holding a choice scarf because it's important to be faster than that. And sometimes you want your scarfers to be faster than something at times two speed in case he uses agility or rock polish. And vice versa, you want to have your agility user get faster than Scarfers after it clicks agility. So that's also something to consider when you're speed creeping. Under creeping. And that's when you, you are dealing with a team that can function using Trick Room. Usually it has to do with Trick Room. And you want to take your Pokemon and make it slower than something can be that uses Trick Room. For example, let's say you have a Marowak Alola and you're facing a team with Magearna, you might want to make it slower than Magearna's slowest possible speed. And there are other functions too, like with a Sapdos and you're going up against a Shaman or a Celebi. You might want to have 235 speed so that you're slower than them with no speed, that way you can get a slow Volt Switch or U-turn because you know that whatever they do to you it's not going to do much damage and if they stay in you want to move second that way that way they hit you instead of the Pokemon you won't switch in and it also works for substitutes if they're subseed 
you'll move after them and you can break their sub and then switch out. Which Pokemon have a good matchup? It's easier to identify, of course, with experience. The more you do it, the more you're going to be able to just look at teams and things are just going to pop out to you that are fantastic in the matchup. To determine, you need to ask yourself some questions. And here are some of those questions. How does this Pokemon get in? If It's not just enough for a Pokemon to be dangerous if it gets in. You need to have opportunities to get it in. Like it needs to be able to switch in on something, or it needs to be able to come in after something gets a KO. You need to think about realistic scenarios where you're going to be able to get this Pokemon in. For example, you could say, well, shit, the opponent doesn't really have anything to switch into my Marowak Alola. But, how, how do I get it in? Their whole team's faster and can hit it, so... That's probably something you wouldn't want to bring in that scenario. What does the opponent do when it... When it... I meant to put does get in, that's a typo. My apologies there. But what does the opponent do when it does get in? It, Let's say you do have opportunities to get that Marowak Alola in, but then your opponent has Milotic, and it has a good matchup to bring a Flame Art. So even when you do get it in, the opponent's just going to be able to go into his Milotic and Wallet. That's something you have to think about. What do they do when you get something in? Maybe it's a great scenario you think you get your Victini and then your opponent's got to get make a sack and that's when you think you definitely want to chalk it down as a p real potential brain what do I have to do to win with this Pokemon you want to start thinking about your win conditions what scenarios take place where I can end up just cleaning out the rest of my opponent's team with this Pokemon you always want to start thinking about how the game ends, not just how a turn is successful. And then the last question I have here, how can the opponent abuse this mon coming in? And that's an interesting one, because maybe a Blissey is going to wall something. It could be like a Maltrez or something, and you know Blissey walls it in, walls it, but you, your opponent has a Kirin Black and it can get free substitutes that Blissey can't break. Now you're in a little bit of a pickle. You don't want to give your opponent these kind of free setups. And it works with uh, choice mons too. You don't want to lock yourself into a move that allows a threat to set up. Because that can be dangerous for you. Now we're going to talk about baiting. Baiting is a bit more of an advanced trick. What is baiting? Well, baiting is when you... It's when you try to get your opponent to do something by making them feel like something's safer than it really is. Now, one of the ways you can do that is with berries. For example, you can have a, a Makalola and you, you're facing a lander, so you put a you put a Shuka Berry on it to take the ground moves and you lull them into a false sense of security and then you can hit them with the hidden power ice or something like that. That's just an example that came to my mind because I have a muck and I'm facing a Landorus in the league. And there are a few ways you can bait someone. You can also take something ooh, like a Lopini and you make someone think that Skarmory is a safe switch in, but you pull out the flamethrower or just something like that. Basically, it just works like that. And there's some examples from my past I thought would be fun to talk about. Uh, some scenarios are running Alamomola with the the electric resisting berry, the Wakan berry, and catching some things with a mirror coat when they try to hit it. And then I had one game where I was facing a Mian Shao and I had my Blissey with a Choppleberry encounter and it went for a high jump kick and I knocked it out. 
And there was another game facing a Mian Xiao where I had a Mama Swine, and I knew that the opponent liked to scarf the Mian Xiao and lead with it. So I let off with my Mama Swine, trying to make them think that it was a favorable matchup. But the first turn I clicked Protect, then they went and crashed. And the next turn, I was adamant life orb, and I was able to knock it out with ice shard. So, that's those are just some examples from my past of where baiting was successful. And yep, bacon don't smell fishy. <laughs> what I'm trying to say there is, if someone brings out something, and you're thinking, why? Why did they just bring that out? You need to be thinking. Why? Why did they bring this out? They gotta have a reason. You have to start thinking about what might be potential bait. Always, if you smell the fish, get out of the pond. And here's an interesting topic. When you just get a crappy matchup, my matchup sucks. I've been there. It's happened quite a bit. And my strategy, I like to, when I have a really crappy matchup, I like to run hyper offense. And I try to just throw everything at my opponent and try to make sure, I, I have a hard matchup against you, I can't really wall your team. You can't wall my team either. Let's go. Let's duke it out. See who wins. That's my way to try to turn a crappy matchup into one where I've got a real fighting chance. Setup is your friend. When there's setup, there is a way, my friend. You can win any battle at any time if you just get the setup right. It creates opportunities and even the toughest of matchups. And not always as bad as you think. The matchup's not always as bad as you think. I have people come to me and they say, I got a shitty matchup here, I don't know what to do. Sometimes you just gotta look closer. You gotta use three-dimensional thinking. Think outside the box. There are ways you can really cause problems for your opponents that just take some time to figure out. I only have four good mons, and that's another familiar situation. When you get into a matchup and you don't have six mons that you think are really good in the matchup. You know, you got four, you got five, you don't know what to do with the last mons. Get creative. Like I was talking about the bad matchup. Think outside the box. Is there something you can bring that can catch them off guard? Maybe you haven't considered this set from this Pokemon. Maybe that can do something for you. Contingency plans. You want to start thinking about what if something bad happens to this Pokemon? How do I deal with this? You want to have backups for some of your plans. For example, you're facing something like Zygarde that can set up and be a problem. Well, you might want to have more than one answer for it. Ain't no one ever had too much hazards. You can always use more hazards. It's always nice to be able to get up your rock, bring some spikes. They can be real annoying for your opponent. And if you're trying to find that fifth or sixth mon, why not bring some hazards? Opportunity to mix up switch-ins. It's always good when you don't need to rely on the same response to something time and time again, the same switch-in is something. And then your opponent can start to tap into your patterns and make predictions. It's always nice when you have the ability to mix it up and have different switch-ins for different things. Check everything. You want to have an answer to everything. You do not want to have an offensive Pokemon that breaks you or a defensive Pokemon that walls you. You don't want... Trust me, you do not want to say, I think my opponent's going to bring these six mons. I'll just bring answers for these six mons. You want to have something for all twelve, whenever and wherever possible. Consider everything they could bring. What do I have for that? That's an important thing to ask yourself. You don't want to have one thing that can just get you. You have prep for everything else and then one mod just tramples on you. And Yep, I have been there. Not too recently, but I have been there. Be unassuming. Put nothing past anyone. 
so true is that you do not want to say, oh, they're not going to bring this. I don't have to deal with that. They will. Every time. Whenever you don't prep for something because you think they're not going to bring it, it's going to come, my friend. That is just how it happens. Even tier fives can shine when not prepared for. In one of my earliest seasons, I actually had Golurk win MVP. It was my... It was my... Well, it was in a UCL league, so... It was an NU, which is their version of tier fives. And it won MVP in that league. It had... It went to four games, and it had 13 KOs. It had three KOs in all four games, and four and one. Anything can be a monster when you don't prepare for it well enough. Leave no stone unturned. Mock battles. That's important. When you're trying to figure out what's going to be annoying for you, what kind of issues you're having, you do a mock battle. And for those who don't know what a mock battle is, is you find a friend who is going to build a team as if they were your opponent facing you, and then you battle them with your team to kind of get an idea of what things on your opponent team can be annoying. Uh, a lot of times when you're f looking for mock battles, people generally, they what they do is they do mock for mock, so you do a mock battle for them and they do a mock battle for you. That's generally what you have to do to get one done. Sometimes your friends will just be willing to do it for free, but usually that's going to be it. And you can find those in the other leagues channel of the GBA Discord. Double check your team. Double check it, absolutely. And what I mean by double checking is you look at your team, you make sure you have the right moves, the moves you meant to have, intended to have, you don't have two of the same move. You make sure you have the right item, and you make sure you have the right ability. You do not want to have an effect spore Amoongus. Unless you want to have an effect spore Amoongus and not regenerate her, but generally that's not what you want to have. And sometimes you just assume that it's going to be preloaded with the right ability, and it is not. <laughs> Triple check it. Yep, go back, look again, make sure it's alright. Get a friend to look over it. If you got an important battle, Send the team to your friend. They'll look over it quickly and tell you if you have anything wrong. <laughs> and yeah, I totally never brought him on with 332 speed to outspeed Garchomp, thinking it had 331 like Landorus Incarnate, not 333. Never happened. That's right. That did not happen to me. Now we got a little less conversation, a little more action, which is a great song, by the way. Long, long live the king. Long live the king. I will now build a team for my ODL Week 2 battle live and show you guys my thought process when building. Yep, I'm gonna, as soon as I get off this slide, I'm gonna go to my team builder and I'm gonna start building. And I'm gonna use a lot of these tricks and try to show you guys what I think, what I do, and how building goes for me. I built hundreds of times and I think it's the strongest part of my game, so. Hopefully you guys can learn something from watching it. Totally no pressure on me to build perfectly because I'm teaching team building. Yep, absolutely no pressure at all. If I screwed up, that's fine. I'm not going to be completely embarrassed by that. <laughs> on to the team builder. I'm just going to check my ODL angle and make sure or it's right. Not my ODL, that's in the league. My OBS angle and make sure it's right. Let me just... I'm going to tinker around with it. I'm going to go in the team and make sure it's right. Okay, so i got to get out of here. There we go. Now I should have my OBS angle right. I had to have it at a different angle to capture the PowerPoint right. And what I'm going to do here is just talk about my team first, and then I'm going to look at his team. I've got... There's my S tier. I've got a Genesect. Oh, I should mention this league. It's uh, it's like the GBA plus an, an S tier. That's what the tiering system is like. And I've got Genesect as my S tier, and he's got Ages Slash. I've got Genesect as an S tier. Mega Slowbro is the tier two Mega. Tornadus is a tier one and my first C user. 
Mew is a tier 1, Heatran is my final tier 1, Buzzwool as my tier 2, believe it or not I got Nihiligo as a tier 3, no clue who decided to put it in tier 3 but I was all over that. Muck is another tier 3, Verizion is a tier 4, Executor Lola is a tier 5 and my other Z user, Golbat is a tier 5, and Mudsdale is a tier 5. And my opponent, JYZ, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correct, but it's too late to check now. He's got Aegis Slash as his tier S, Lopany is his tier 1 Mega, Kartana is his tier 1 and I'm not a Z user. I almost thought it was for a second. <laughs> Landorus Incarnate, which is Sand Force, not Cheer Force, as his tier 2 and his Z user. Tapu Fini is another tier 2. Cresselia is yet another tier 2. Rotom Heat is a tier 3. Kiram is a tier 3. Rose Raid is yet another tier 3. Persian Alola is a tier 4 and his second Z user. Hit on top is another tier 4, and Ride On is this tier 5. So, right off the bat, the thing that jumps out, Aegis Slash, that's, that's always the thing to deal with. He has a Lopany, but my team's pretty well equipped to deal with it, actually. I've got Mega Slowbro, I've got Mew, I've got Buzzwool, I've got Golbat. It would be a problem against it. Most teams, but my team's really well built to deal with Lopany. And he's got Kartana, which is normally pretty annoying, but. Well, it could be annoying, actually, if it runs Aerial Ace for Buzzwool. Then Buzzwool can't just be hard counter to it, and you'd think in this matchup it would make a lot of sense for it to run that. It's not a Z user, so I don't really have to worry about it being Bloom Doom or anything like that. He's got his Landorus Incarnate, which... Yeah, it might be a little bit of an issue, but I do have Slowbro and Mew. So I'm not the most worried about it. And I also have Golbat if I want to bring that. He's got Tapu Fini. Mm. It's not overly an issue, but it's not something I'm overly comfortable dealing with, because its stab is pretty pretty good against my team, actually. And he's got Cresselia, which actually is can be really annoying to prep for, but my team's really strong against it. I've got Makalola, which... Whenever Crest comes in, Makalola just completely shuts it down. We've got Buzzwool, which hits it hard. Genesect, which of course is Genesect. He's got Rotom Heat, which is can be annoying, but I have Heatran and Nihiligo, so I don't expect it to be that much of a problem. He's got his Kyurem, which actually might be a little bit of a problem. I do have to worry about that quite a bit. I just... With the coverage it has, Ice Beam, Earth Power, in Power Fire, there's not too much I have to deal with it that comfortably. So that's going to be one of the things I put emphasis on being able to deal with. He's got Rose Raid, which really I'm not overly concerned about at all. I've got a bunch for that. He's got Persian, which isn't great, nor is it bad, I guess. It does kind of invite in Buzzwool unless it's got Hidden Power Flying. He's got Hip on top, which really doesn't do much. And he's got Ride On, which I wouldn't imagine he would bring. It just doesn't have a great matchup. Overall, I think the matchup's pretty good for me. I just have to be careful to make sure I can deal with his Kyurem. The first thing I guess I should do is think about how I'm dealing with that Kyurem. I think the set that concerns me the most is the Subroos variant. That set, I think, would have to run Earth Power, Roost, Substitute, and Ice Beam, though, and I wouldn't touch Genesect. 
It almost makes me think about potentially running a V Genesect. It's not the worst against him, especially because he would probably want to run a special Aegis Slash with Buzzwool being there. So that's an idea I'm going to think about. I also really like Banded Genesect in this matchup a lot, so... You know what, I think that's what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to run a Banded Genesect. I really do like it in this matchup. And I want to run it to be faster than his Curum. I'm going to make sure that's exactly where I need to speed creep. Speed creeping there. For those of you who don't really know how that works, I'm just one speed faster than his mod. Let's see if I need it to be faster than anything else. No, I do not. Faster than Kiram is what I need. I definitely want to have U turn on at extreme speed. See what else is pretty good in this game. Iron Head's not bad. I'm a, I think I want to run Blaze Kick. Just because it hits his Aegis Slash. I'm thinking Blaze Kick and Iron Head are definitely my last two moves on this. It just has fantastic coverage for his team. This has the potential to put a little bit of pressure on in the early game and also it can potentially clean in the late game. I'm just going to throw this all in attack and then put the rest in HP. Usually when I have a little bit to put in bulk, I just put it in the HP. I usually put these teams in OU just because it'll say Genesex and Uber, but if there's something about its set that's not legal, it'll say I have to fix that, so I can just go to Validate. Gotta be shiny and hasty, okay. Yeah, I think it has to do that to run uh, extreme speed. I always forget that, though. I wish it came in more abilities than that. It's a little bit annoying to deal with that. That cripple to it, but I can't really complain too much because they let me draft a Genesect, and I thought that thing should have been banned, so. So for the next mod, I'm thinking... To help me deal with Kiram, I also want to have a specially defensive Mew. And that would help me deal with like a Specs variant. What am I doing? I was typing Specs instead of Mew. It would also help me deal with like a Specs variant. Or like a Scarf variant. And I'm thinking about a careful Mew with Drain Punch. That's what makes a lot of sense to me. I'm going to see first if I need to have any speed on Mew. It might be nice to put uh, two to increase its speed by two, just in case he tries to creep it with Tapu Fini. I think that's all I would really need speed for. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. What I want is Taunt, Roost, Drain Punch, and I'm thinking maybe. Maybe Willow Wisp. This mod will also help me deal with Lopany. Wisp could be nice for Aegis Slash. It would also be nice to have something to kind of hit Cress with this. Although Cress does kind of get worn down since it's got Levitate, it doesn't get shielded by the Misty Terrain. And this is a lot of what happens in team building. Sometimes I just kind of have to stop and think. Normally my team building is going to take shorter amount of time than this will, but I just like to explain it clearly for you guys. It could be nice to potentially have something like Scald on Mew too. Not touching top of Fini gets kind of annoying. I 
I would like to have something to touch Tapafini on this and also hit Cress a little bit better. Maybe like Gunk Shot, but then I can't touch Aegis Slash. Liquidation doesn't help with Feeny. I could run Earthquake, I guess, but it's not helping me with uh, Cresselia. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with will o for now. And then I can start to think about it later, depending on how many switch-ins I have to certain of his mons. Looking back at the matchup, Torn could be potentially really nice in this matchup. Something like a Sky Strike or a Pummeling with a Taunt for Cress. A physical variant looks really nice in this matchup, actually. I could run like a physical pummeling tornado set. He just really has a hard time walling that. Especially because so many of the things he has, like Rotom or Cress, I would want to come in on Torn. Really hate getting knocked off like that. That's what I'm thinking about doing. I think I want to try a fight in EMC variant. Before I dive into that, I just want to make sure that. Exagutor is not the better Z user in this. And I don't think it is because he has Cresselia. It's not bad, it's just I don't think it's better than Torn. And it is a little bit of a boner not having a, a flying move on this thing, but Torn can really survive that pretty well. I could run Grass Knot or U-Turn to the last move. Either one works pretty well. I think I'll let U-Turn on it. Just see, yeah, I definitely need to make it faster in Gartana and make it jolly. What else do I want it to be faster than? Just Cartana. Cartana is the benchmark I need to hit. I'm gonna over creep it a little bit. I just need to have it be at this, but I'm just gonna over creep it a little bit. That way, my opponents can't creep my creeps in the future. That's what we're going to do with our Torn. Now, I think that Muck is a real good matchup for me. It helps me deal with Aegis Slash. It shuts down Crest. It makes Feeny easier to deal with. I am wondering if I want to run like a Recycle variant or potentially one that can sponge wisp and run chesto resto I think my smartest move is to run a, like a figgy berry variant it'll also help if he tries to bring trick room to be the trick house we want to run gluttony when we have this and recycle Knockoff's really good. Probably, I wonder if I want Gunk Shot or Poison Jab. I'm thinking Gunk Shot right now. Just nice to have that added power. Hmm. I have some freedom with the last move because there isn't anything I really strictly need. 
I could put Shadow Sneak on it, which isn't bad. Hmm. I could think about Memento, but I don't know if I really need it for anything. Ice Punch might be nice with Landers being there. If he thinks Landers is a switching on this. Taunt is pretty nice. I think what I want is Shadow Sneak. That's what I'm leaning right now. See anything that would make me want to run clear smog? Not in particular. I think it makes sense for me to put Ice Punch on it, that way Landers can't come in for free on it. And to me it makes the most sense to run special variant for this matchup. Even though I already have the Mew doing that. It just gives it the best switch ins. I definitely don't anticipate him running Trick Room. Yeah, I don't think I have to worry about being slower than anything in this matchup. So I can run a set like this. We're gonna make it shiny because I like it shiny. We got two mods left. Let's see what kind of things can be a potential issue for the four we have. Hmm. Landers can be annoying. So can. Yeah, I think we definitely need to throw in a good physical wall here. I'm wondering if that would be Slowbro, which helps me deal with Landers and Lopany, but then I'm still having to add something else to deal with Kartana. Hmm. Slowbro is pretty good in this. Although there is a few things that lets in, but a lot of the things that Muck deals with. If I do bring that, then what am I doing for Tartana? Potentially Golbat? I'm not confident in bringing Buzzwolves in answer to Cartana because I know I've run Aerial Ace Cartana for Buzzwolves before, and it, it was successful. Hmm. I might just do Golbat here and then maybe something that helps me deal with Rotom. I'm typing Rotom instead of Golbat. What am I doing? And Defog just in case he tries to set up some hazards. You know, I might even want to have hazards on my meal. I might want to have a rock on my meal. Yeah, I think I do want to put Rock on my meal. There we go, now we've got our last move slide here. Hopefully Mew's faster than Sfini. That could be an important thing in this game. Let's see what Golbat set makes the most sense. If I have Rock on Mew, I don't think I still... I definitely don't think I still want Defog on Golbat. I could run like a Taunt, Roost, Super Fang variant. I've always really liked Super Fang on Golbat, maybe Toxic is the last move, or Heat Wave, so I can deal with Kartana easier. Yeah, I think I definitely want to go Heat Wave there. And of course, I'm running an Eviolite on this thing. Inner focus is kind of nice with Lopany, but 
infiltrators and generally the better ability and I think this matchup is no exception especially with Kartana in case he tries to run the Cybertron set and I can make this thing bold max defense HP a little bit in special defense there we go I'm wondering how worried I am about Rotom because I do have the Mew and the Mock which can deal with it pretty good. Might be nice to have Heatran here, but it's not the best matchup for it. Maybe a Scarf Tran. But then the Scarf Tran's not really helping me with Rotom. I could go on Hiligo here, which would make Rotom basically null and void. It also helps with Feeny. That's the thought. It'll also be my first time not bringing Slowbro and having it. Buzzwool is pretty nice in this matchup. But it's not helping me that much with the old Rotom. Yeah, I think I want to do Nihiligo here. That's what I think my smartest play is. The set's more of an interesting question. Assault Vest could be a good bring because it makes Curum easier to deal with. It also helps if his H slash is a special attacker like I suspect it would be. That's what I think I want to do. I think I want to make this uh, specially attacking. And he'll go. And I'm just making sure that Landers is what I need it to be faster than. Yeah, that's definitely what I needed to be faster then. I should have thought more about its moves and I have to go back. I definitely wanted to have Sludge Wave, I think, and Hidden Power Ice. That's a no-brainer. I, I normally I'd like it to have a move for Cortana, but with Golbat I feel fairly secure in being able to deal with that thing. As well as the Torn. It would be nice to have Grass Knot for Rhydon, because that could be a very real bring as an answer to Nihil ago. And then maybe like a Foul Play to hit Aegis Slash. Or an Acid Spray to beat Cresselia. But I have Mock, I'm not worried about Cresselia. Muck shuts down any variant of Cresselia. Well, maybe a curse would help me with Muck dealing with Cresselia. Just to make sure it's definitely not an issue. Because it might be able to wall knockoffs. Yeah, I think I want to have curse just to have a little bit more security in dealing with that and some freedom to do this. Although I might have to worry a bit about Potentially a, some sort of setup landers. You know what? I think this is where I'm thinking about landers, and I have to reconsider these last two mons a little bit. I would think it would be Sword Sand Sky Strike. And that makes me want to go here with Slowbro. Not slow king. <laughs> slow bro. I'm going to put a slow knight on it to make sure I'm going to put a regenerator here. Yeah, that does make it easier to deal with. And then I have to replace Nihiligo with something that helps me deal with Gartana. 
that's a lot of what happens when you team building. It's very regular that you're going to build something and then you're going to realize you have to reconfigure it. The moves, I probably want Psy Shock. Probably Scald too, of course. Definitely want Slack Off. Maybe flamethrower for the last one makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I think that's a move set I want on this. All right, I'm just making sure I don't need any speed on it. I don't think he has anything slow enough to warrant it. Yeah, you shouldn't. Let me check how much speed this is. So it does have more than I would want to put on Muck to deal with it. To make sure I deal with Cartana, I might end up bringing Golbat back here. Which does make Rotom a little scary, but I do have Muck and Mew. And Rock. I could also consider going with Nihiligo, maybe over Torn, but I do like Torn a lot in this matchup. Let's see what Torn is helping me with over Nihiligo. It makes Landorus a little easier to deal with. Nah, I think I want Nihiligo over Torn, even though it would leave the scene without his ease, or it's not really the end of the world. making sure that's what I want to do and I think it is yeah I think it is and I, just, I still want it faster than Landorus and Power Ice Sludge Wave has to be timid to outspeed it Foul play for H slash makes a lot of sense. What else do I need to hit? Hmm. Oh, grass knot would be nice for ride on. I'm wondering what boost I want on this thing. I think I might want the speed boost, and then that would kind of nudge me to put Psychic on it over one of these moves. Hmm. This thing might be able to clean. Then what move gets replaced? Psychic. Probably grass, not right. And <laughs> then just hope it doesn't come to dealing with right on. This thing could potentially be a cleaner. And then that lets me put some bulk in special defense, which makes this thing even more dangerous. Yeah, I think that's that looks mighty fine. This team's looking almost done. Make this bold, max HP, because slow bro, gonna slow bro. We're gonna rebuild the goal bat set we had. Having the Nihiligo and Mew makes me more comfortable bringing two physical walls here. Heat Wave is nice for Cartana. Roost. Super Fang. Taunt. Hmm. What do I. 
I don't think I need any speed on it. Yeah, I don't think it makes too much sense having speed on this thing. Make it bold, max HP, a little bit in special defense. And it's looking like a complete team here. And then what we're doing here is double checking. Always gotta do that. It only has one ability, you turn extreme speed blaze kick iron head, speed, yeah, procure them. That's what it should be. Special defense, taunt, roost, dream, so. so yep, that's right. Assault vest, beast boost. More speed than special attack, yep. Salt vest, HBI, sludge wave, foul play, psychic, that's correct. Figgy berry, gluttony to make it work, recycle, knockoff, gunk shot, curse. That should be correct, yep. And slow bro, psy shot, three attacks, and slack off. Physically defensive regenerator, yep. Golbat infiltrator, heat wave, ruse, super fang taunt. Physically defensive, yep, that set's correct also. And now the last step is looking over his Pokemon and making sure I have something for everything. For Aegis Slash, I've got my, my Golbat and my Muck. And I've also got moves to hit it on everything, pretty much, except for Mew. For Glopany, I've got my Slowbro, and I've got my Golbat. Even Mew can help out. Cartana, I've got Golbat there to hard wall it. Mew helps a little bit. Genesec can, can kind of check it. For Landorus, I've got my Slowbro, which should deal with any variant. Any variant that would beat Slowbro probably can't deal with Cool bad unless it's a, maybe a calm mind variant, but then I've got a few ways to revenge kill it. I'm not overly worried about that. Tabu Fini, I've got my mock for there, and I've got my Nihiligo. Genesec can check it. For Cresselia, I've got Mock, which shuts it down, and I also have Genesec. For Rotom, I've got my Nihiligo, which just walls the crap out of it. And Mew helps me deal with it, so does Muck. For Kyurem, I've got Nihiligo as a check, I've got Mew as a wall for it. Muck helps a little bit, Genesec can check it. For Roserade, I've got my Nihiligo, I've got Golbat and Muck. Mew kinda deals with it, not really. <laughs> Persian, I've got Muck there. Genesect. I don't think it can be too big of an issue. Hit on top, I've got Mew, I've got Slowbro, I've got Golbat. Ride on, I've got Slowbro, which deals with it definitely, no matter what it is, really. And Genesect can hit it pretty hard, too. So that team is looking pretty complete. I think I've got myself a team here. And that's going to be it for my Draft League 101 team building video. I really hope you guys learned something. If you want to see more videos like this, drop a like, comment, please subscribe. I really appreciate all my subscribers. And thank you guys for watching. Have yourselves a good night.